This is the new BMW M135i. And in this video, I'm going to find out what it's like. And I'm also going to compare it to the old M140i to see if you should buy one of these or rush out to get one of these old things before they're all sold out. Now to do that, I'm going to compare their performance. <laughs> see what they sound like. Critique their designs and you know what they say, big bonnet, big engine. Inspect their interiors. Welcome to the best looking dash design of any BMW for a long time. See how practical they are. And of course, poke them with a stick. Ah, it's not going in. Now, before we do all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. This M135i has a version of BMW's two litre four cylinder turbo, but M Division have breathed on it, so it's got a bigger turbo and some strengthened internals. It produces 306 horsepower, 450 newton meters of torque, which is pretty impressive. In fact, this is the most powerful four cylinder BMW has ever done on a production car. One thing to note though is that it's actually mounted that away, so transversely, and it's in front of the front axle, which is very Audi. Vorsprung Dirk BMW. This old M140i has a three litre straight six turbo and it has 340 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. Also, it's mounted lengthways and is further back in the chassis. And as a result, this car has a perfect 50 50 weight distribution front to back, whereas the new car has 60% at the front and 40 towards the back because the new one series is set up to be a front wheel drive car most of the time. I think the time has come for a sound check between the two cars. So let's start off with the four cylinder. Now let's hear what this six cylinder sounds like. Click up there to vote which you think sounded the best. This car or the new one? The X-Drive system in this new M135i can only send a maximum of 50% of the engine's power to the rear wheels. It does though come as standard with a front limited slip differential for improved corner exiting traction. Unlike the new car, this old M140i is available with two-wheel drive or as an X-Drive. Actually, in the UK, we could only get the two-wheel drive version, but it was sending its power to the right place, the rear wheels for added fun. Also, the X-Drive in this car is slightly different because it can send all of the engine's power to the back wheels if it needs to. Right, now I want to see how quick these cars accelerate. So I'm going to start with the new M135i. I'm going to put it into launch mode and it's dead simple to do. So I just put the car into sport. I then put the traction into sport as well. Gearbox, let's have that in sport while we're at it. Got my specialist timing gear there. I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Decent start. Oh, strong gear change as well. What's it gonna do? So that's the 60 miles an hour. And ooh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. It did 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. Okay, so now I'm gonna launch the old boy. Once again, everything is in its sportiest setting. It's good to go. And I want you to vote. Just click up there to guess whether you think it's gonna be quicker or slower than the new car. Well, that felt quicker off the line. This feels stronger, I'm telling you. What do the numbers say? So, the numbers, they say this did 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. 0.4 of a second quicker. That's not progress for you. I want a piece of unrestricted autobahn and we're gonna do an in-gear acceleration test between the two cars. So we're in third gear, sports mode, and we're gonna accelerate from 80 kilometers an hour. Three, two, one, go. Oh, come on. Oh, he's getting a lead and he's pulling, he is so pulling. Oh my God, look at that. 
That has destroyed me. Right, what we're going to do now is a similar test, but this time with the cars in driving comfort, like you're cruising around to see how their gearboxes respond. So I'm going to call it in again. Three, two, one, go. God, this took ages to kick down. Now we're off though. Oh, yeah, that gearbox responded better in comfort than this one did. And we've lost. Well, there you go. That's what happens when you go from six cylinders to four. Now I should point out that while both these cars have 8-speed automatic gearboxes, they are made by different companies. The one in the M140i is made by ZF. The one in the M135i is made by ASIN. And if you ask me, it's not quite so good. This M135i has some upgraded brakes over the standard version of the new one series and they're absolutely massive. Huge calipers and you've also got discs that are 360 millimetres in diameter. The car's weight is 1600 kilos if you include a driver as well, so not too heavy. This old car also has upgraded M Sport brakes over the normal one series, but the calipers don't look so big. Also, the discs, they're 345 millimetres in diameter and this car with the X-Drive version is 15 kilos heavier than the new one. Now it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out when it comes to braking performance. Now I'm going to do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. Let's see. Come on, full emergency stop. Right. That did it in 32 metres. Okay, so how's this going to go in the braking test from 60 miles an hour? Vote up there if you think it's going to win or lose. Here we go. Now, did you guess correctly? So it took 38.6 metres to brake from 60 miles an hour. So that is progress for you this time. I quite like the look of this new one series, especially in this blue paint. I don't think it looks quite as smart as the new Mercedes A-Class though. Obviously this sporty M135 version has some upgrades such as a M-specific grille, it has deeper front bumpers, it has a spoiler at the back and deeper rear bumper as well. And obviously you've got some sportier wheels which are larger and it sits low to the ground by 10 millimeters. I think the new car is slightly prettier than this old one, but there's something just a little bit more manly about this. I think it's the longer bonnet, like a proper saloon car. You know, it's just a bit more, Wah! you know what they say, big bonnet, big engine. Now, there is one thing that we need to do. We need to check for fake vents, and I haven't found any on this car, but what about the new one? I have managed to find one fake vent on this new car, so it's here, look. It's revealed by the car wow twig of truth. I definitely couldn't buy this now. I really like the interior design of this new one series. The dash is great. It's nicely laid out. It looks cool, very, very modern. I still prefer the interior design of the Mercedes, the way it has that one big screen stretched across, but this is kind of cool and the quality in this BMW is better than the A-Class. Now compared to the old car, it's like light years ahead and so is the infotainment system. Now it is a little bit harder to fathom at first, it's a bit more complex, but then the things you can do with it so much better. So you've got really good voice commands, which are a bit like Google Assistant. You've also got lots of other features such as the internet connectivity. You've got things like reversing assist and all kinds of crazy mod cons. You've also got digital dials, though BMW's digital dials are not my favorite. I don't like the way the rev counter goes backwards. It's all a bit dark as well. The digital driver's displays that you get in an Audi or in a Mercedes are slightly better, but yeah, I do like the interior of this car quite a lot. And these sports seats, they do feel special. This old car definitely feels dated inside. I mean, even back in the day, it just was a little bit bland, the interior. Quality's always been all right, but I know where I'd rather be sitting. Now, the infotainment system is pretty decent still, and it is easier to use at first, but it just doesn't have the functionality of the new system where you've got gesture controls and all that kind of stuff. And I do like gesture controls. I do not care what you say, but yeah, the normal dials, I think they're just a bit better. This new one series feels reasonably roomy here in the back, so decent knee room. Headroom is all right, people over six foot will be fine. There's a decent amount of space as well in the foot well. My only complaint is the fact that this rear seat seems very flat. It's almost like you sat on a bench. Hmm. This old car does feel a little bit more claustrophobic in the back. It's not quite as comfortable and the doors don't open as wide either. And that's all I have to say on the matter. The boot. That's all right. You've got 360 litres of space there. Check this out. The new car has an electric tailgate. Yeah. 
And if you look at the boot, you might get that doesn't look quite as big, but you do have underfloor storage and quite a lot of it on this car. Check that out. So in total, you have 380 litres. Let's talk prices. So this new M135i starts from £36,500. But through Caro, you can get one of these in Shadow Edition, non X Drive, because we don't get that in the UK, for £34,500. So if you want to see how much money you can save on a new car, just click up there on the pop out banner or follow the link below the video to get a car wow. All the comparisons we've talked about so far are all well and good, but ultimately it's going to come down to the driving, isn't it? As an everyday driver to live with, I think this car is better than the old one. It's quieter, noticeably from the get-go. It's also comfier, so both the cars are fitted with adaptive dampers, but this is more comfortable both in comfort mode and sports mode over bumps. Generally, just driving and living with, I would have this. But what about when you want to have some fun? So I'm just going to whack it into manual mode, put it into sport, and get hoon this thing about a bit. BMW has fitted a lot of extra bracing to this car in the front and in the back to keep it nice and rigid, and that does help with the handling it grips really really well also when you're changing direction quickly it feels stable and solid and secure it gives you lots of confidence that m140i can feel a little bit loose when you're really on it i mean if you've got the rear drive car you definitely need the rear diff on it otherwise yeah you can get a bit of one tire fire i think at covering ground this is actually quicker also the steering it's actually quicker than in the normal one series but you can pay to have that upgraded to have this steering rack and yeah i do like it I think if you compare this car, say, to an A35 or Golf R, it does just have the edge and dynamics. But what you don't get, like you got in the old M140i, is that sensation of really being pushed out of a corner that you get from a rear drive bias car. And I miss that. I guess I'm just a rear drive fanboy. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, I reckon this new car is the better one series for most people, most of the time. But for petrol heads like me, I think I'd go for this old car because it's got two extra cylinders, more power, and of course, it's got that rear drive action. Oh well, those days are gone. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.